Yeah, yeah, they can't go to KB. They, toy, they can't be to KB Toys R Us or uh, Toys R Us and go, or see the ad to come to Walmart or whatever. No, it's they're like, running through the store. It's all through the store. When we see it on the shelf and they recognize it, but that's a good point. So cartoons have to be more recognizable. Kids have to recognize it. It has to be more distinguished for the kids to see it on the shelf. So the marketing is the child. I mean, it's always been a child, but how do you get the child to run in, down the toy aisle and find your item? You can't really tell them it exists unless you do it through the show. Right, I watched cartoon ads when, when we were kids were a big thing. That was their, back then, we were like, oh my god, that's so cool. They made the, the toy action on the moving, you know. It's keeping cartoons and shows from having their own ads within their show. They the did, they, well, we haven't watched them in a long time. They still do. Uh, Nickelodeon, Disney, the every once in a while they'll shows. have their shows, they'll still throw advertisements out. Or they'll do like an ad, like a kid's playing a video game, and if it's on their phone, then the ad will come through or whatever. There's just different ways of marketing, it's the same thing. I feel like I would throw an ad within the narrative of the cartoon. Well, as they're playing with it, like, all well, the kids like, hey, look at this brand new toy, blah, blah, blah. Somehow, like, that's like the mad scientist sitting around a table deciding how to control the masses. Uh, I don't want to become one of them. Thing is, I'm already one of them. I just have to be mindful that I am and to, and to honor my faith and not use the, the machine of the world to cannibalize those that we're showing our our love to and I love the sugars to give back more than we take and that's the key. Most companies cannibalize their customers and they're taking, they're taking, they're not really giving value, they're just they taking and taking and that's, they're going to pay, they're going to pay the price one day. They, they'll definitely pay the price and you know we've, you know, I've got retail experience most of my life and like just seeing that experience I want to put in, I, want, I don't want to be like he said, I, I want to take what we get. Give back to the community. Make you know, like we go resell. We we do resell, but we don't do it because we want to make a ton of money. We want to give it back at another home. We want to give it an opportunity to go somewhere else and give us a chance to have an income to where we can do what we're doing right now all the time. The freedom. The freedom of doing what we want to do, sharing with you guys, giving back to the community, keeping things out of landfill, and that's what we want to do. And so we can eat awesome burritos like this. What's it called when people watch people eat? Mind something? What's that word? I don't know. There's weirdos What's the call when people watch people play video games all day? I, I don't get that either. But they do. I want to say voyeurism, but that's a pretty... A bit of, that's a dark a, name. I think it used to, be, used, to be a, used to be a sketchy name. Now I think that kind of would apply. There's probably a different term, but it's the same thing. You're watching somebody do something else that you want to do and getting enjoyment out of it. That's cool. Well, that just maybe it's just an influence. <laughs> so everybody just became a creeper. Everybody's creeping on everybody. Thanks, never, guys. Thanks for being our creeps. We appreciate yes, you. I never thought, you know, as a kid, teenager, thought TV and cable would always be around. Never thought in a million years it'd be devices where you have streaming things where everything's streamed. There's no affiliate where you flip the channels. Oh, you have to watch that one time. Or maybe on demand if you go and pick certain episodes. Now, majority of your stream services, they're all, every show is available for you. Boom. One fee a month. You know? It's insane where we've gotten to where we're all instant gratification. We've got to have it, which is good and bad. Music has had that effect negatively. Movies. You're still getting that stuff, but it's real. Like now, I want it now, tangible, and it's hurting the artists, <laughs> hurting the people making it, and especially music. I mean, it's getting to where it's harder and harder. That's why you got to buy from the actual artist if you want that independent artist to really make something. Unless you're like Metallica, you ain't gonna make tons of money on strings. So. Yeah, or or artists good. you like, buy directly from them, or buy, buy the album buy on directly. iTunes versus streaming. You could do both, stream to stream, but they're getting plenty of a dollar on that. But I, I have a lot of friends that write books, and I asked them. I didn't realize this until I started asking them. Hey, what's the best way for me to buy from you? Where you get the most money? They said digital downloads because it's nothing. It's zeros and ones, and they make the most profit off of digital downloads. Physical copy costs a lot. You know, it costs you dollar fifty or whatever, two bucks to produce, if, depending on the product is. Huge markup. Not no, the music is not a huge markup at all. Not at all. 
But I guess if well, it is for the if distributor. You, if you expanded that into like the mass amounts of, copies. there's got to be someone. Maybe it's us. Who knows? That's gonna make it to where the artist has a stream. They get artists get majority of the, someone out there has to be thinking about how to do that. Because there's enough artists out there. Someone that's an artist is gonna be like, look, I'm tired of this. Let's make something that we can do. That's let's do something to where the artist gets more than pennies on the dollar. I remember back 15 years ago when YouTube was really taking off. People were trying to make it. Even back then, they weren't making a huge amount of money. I was actually making more money then than I'm making now, and I get more views now on our channel than I did back then because the monetization was open. It's been closed, like in some ways. So people that have good views, but they still hit that million viewer or whatever, it's minutes or a thousand, two thousand minutes. X amount of minutes, X amount of views. Yeah. So back then it was even more easy to make money for, it was, YouTube was killing it. I mean, sure, it's, they're still killing it, but they were killing it back then. People even had to start a company called Patreon. This one company was a creator. He was a creator and he created Patreon because it was not going directly to the creator. It was going sideways and then pennies squeezed out of pennies to get paid. So Patreon allowed the viewer to decide the amount. I had had this done for a while back in the day. I never made any money, but it was such a good idea. I got a couple of coffees, actually. Can you drink a fifty? It's different now. It, we're figuring it out. We're not making money. We're having fun. We're probably spending more money than we're making. Yeah. They say the first couple of years, you, like you even told me, oh. that you're in the business organization, you're losing money or you're breaking even. Yeah, you're investing more into your business and your products than you're actually declaring and making. But that's the investment. That's why investors come into a company and they look at the five year valuation. Like, what is it going to be in five years? And they take what it's growing, its growth within a certain amount of months, and they calculate that and then they stretch it over five years if the company continues to grow. And that's how you get your valuation. So it's a puffed up version of the money of what it's worth now. And some people, companies aren't worth a lot now, but they're so successful, they're getting 10 times what it's worth when they, when they um, get investors or whatever. It's the hope of it being successful. Yep. All right, I'm ready to go to the next stop. Let's go to Thunderbird. Ah, <laughs> All right. Good coma. All right, bye.